Hey everybody, welcome back to SCG Reviews. I'm Will Jones and today we are doing Game of Thrones. Before we really get into it, quick shameless plug, Stone Circle Games has a new game of our own coming out. It's called Battle for Bitternia. It's a tabletop MOBA and it is awesome. If you like what we do here, please go to the links below and check it out. See if it's something you might enjoy. Now then, A Game of Thrones the Board Game is a competitive military strategy game for three to six players. Set in George R. R. Martin's mystical lands of Westeros, each player takes on the role of a rival great house vying for control of the kingdom. The game takes place over a maximum of ten rounds, during which players will issue orders to their armies in the field, muster new soldiers to their cause, vie for control of the Iron Throne, resist wildling attacks, etc, etc, all manner of things that happen in the Seven Kingdoms. There are a lot of different elements to this game, and I don't have time to explain each one in detail, but the real meat of it lays in how you issue orders to your troops and then resolve them in turn. So you've got your map of Westeros divided into territories, and each territory at any given time can have an army in it belonging to one of the players. During each game round, every army on the board must simultaneously, secretly, receive an order from their player of the following type, either raiding, supporting, defending, marching, or consolidating power. Orders are represented by these little circular tokens that go face down next to their armies. Once every player has issued orders to their armies, all the tokens are flipped face up and everyone can see what everyone else is doing. Orders are then resolved in turn order by category. First raids, then marches, which is also attacks, then consolidating power. And the support and defense also factors in when people are marching. When you do get into combat with other people, when one of your armies marches into a territory occupied by someone else, combat is very very, very interesting. The thing that's so cool about it is that there's no random element. So many military games get this so wrong because they try to throw in this, oh, the chaos of war thing, but that makes games about war really unsatisfying when you can plan everything right and it still doesn't go your way. But in Game of Thrones, the only random thing in combat is a completely optional module that I never play with. The base combat version without that module is really unusual but wonderful, so bear with me as I explain it. Every player starts the game with a hand of seven character cards that all represent important people from their noble house, the Starks, the Lannisters, etc. Once combat is joined, you pick a character to lead your army and add their character strength to your army's strength to get their total power in combat. And of course, each character card has abilities that do things other than contribute to your total army's power, like the ability to directly kill units or other just strange effects that happen in text. What makes this so perfect and so very Game of Thrones, though, is that there's no shuffling or redrawing of your deck until your hand is empty, which means once you've spent a character, they're gone until you've used every other character in your deck. And everyone knows this. Your opponents can see exactly what's in your discard pile and exactly what's in your hand and exactly what your army strength is so they can say, well, he knows he can't possibly win, so he might just slough off this terrible character dead weight from his hand and try to get rid of that, so maybe I could go under the barrier and maybe slough off something terrible in my hand, but if he second guesses me and thinks I'm gonna do that, he might play something great which would actually give him a surprise win. It's this wonderful second guessing game. That's what makes the combat so deliciously Game of Thrones in flavor. There's this sort of sense of inevitability and in trying to pit your best resources just at the right moment because if I throw down my awesome Stannis Baratheon here, who knows if I might need him more in a fight one or two turns from now. Outside of combat, there are a lot of resources to manage and a lot of different strategies that you can take to worm your way toward victory. For example, you've got these three influence tracks that represent the Iron Throne, the military of the fiefdoms, and the favor of the king's court. The higher you rank on each of those tracks, you get certain benefits over the others. Like, for example, the higher up you are on the fiefdom's military track, you might win ties versus other players, or get the special Valerian Steel Blade ability to give yourself a little extra boost at the end of combat. And every now and again in the game, it sort of random times there's this event called Clash of Kings in which you bid with these power tokens you have on the tracks so that in theory if you manage your auctioneering well you can be really high on all of them. There's no necessary trade-off. There's a lot of player versus player second guessing mechanics. But one of the main ways that you get these power tokens is through consolidate power orders and any army that uses a consolidate power order can't be marching as an army to attack other people. So there's a trade-off there. You really have to 
plan your strategies very well. Then you've got the supply track and the reconcile supplies event where your territories have these little barrels in them. If you don't control enough of them, then your armies can only reach a certain size and composition, which can really hamper you when you're trying to recruit new guys into your territory. Then there are a couple of event decks that have cards that'll crop up every round or so that say, oh, you can't play this certain type of order, or the person who has the highest favor on the king's court makes some decision for all the players that they all have to do right now. And then of course there's the wildlings, because of course the wildlings are going to attack from beyond the wall, why wouldn't they? And every event that pops up has a chance to move this little wildling track forward a little bit. If it gets too high, the wildlings come and attack, and everybody has to bid power tokens to bolster the Night's Watch without knowing what the consequences of success or failure are going to be. And how good or bad things are for you really depends on how much you bid in secret relative to the other players. It's this multi-layered game of political chicanery that fits so perfectly into the Game of Thrones universe where you're not only worried about what your opponents can do on the board, you're worried about what kind of people they are around the table, and you know which of your friends are horrible and who you have to take down at all costs because they can't be trusted. And if you're one of those style over substance people, this game is gorgeous. The board and all the pieces are very clearly designed to look like a map table that would be inside one of the great castles of Westeros. When you're moving the pieces around on a board with this aesthetic, it really does feel like they're representing real armies in the field and real people are dying by the sword. It draws you in just by the look. And that's to say nothing of the card art with all the characters and wildlings on it. The artist really had a very clear vision of what these people should look like, what Tywin Lannister should look like, what Catelyn Stark should look like, and they're just wonderful. As you may have guessed by now, I love this game. I really have a soft spot for a good war game because there are way too many bad ones out there, and I'm also a huge Game of Thrones fan, and this one, in a way that I would never have predicted, really draws you into the feeling of being the lord of a noble house and just doing anything you can to scrape and claw for power. There are only two warnings I'll give about this game, not really flaws so much as just things you need to be aware of. First off, it is very complex. It's not really for novice board gamers. Second of all, the playtime is extremely long. You'll find even short games of this ranging upwards of four hours, and long ones can go from six to eight without breaking a sweat. The box says two to four hours, and on that I call shenanigans. But again, those two warnings are things that can be easily dealt with if you just plan for them before you sit down at the table. This is one of two games over the last five years or so, the other one being Pandemic Legacy, that I will actually invite people over to play specifically. Not come on over to my house and let's play board games, but come on over to my house and let's play Game of Thrones. That really says something. And that is my ringing endorsement of A Game of Thrones, the board game. Thank you all so much for tuning in. We really appreciate you watching. As always, go ahead and click below to like and subscribe for more great videos from Stone Circle Games. And until then, have fun around the table. Oh.